end zone touchdown. Let's throw down to second in time. It's the last two possessions. Welcome to this week's Big 12 Report presented by Dr. Pepper. We're out of the studio this week reporting from Big 12 Women's Basketball Media Days at the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. I'm Wendell Barthouse, Big12Sports.com correspondent, joined as always by co-host Carter Bath. Thanks, Wendell. A couple of weeks ago, we showed you how the TCU Froghorn helps raise the noise level at Amon G. Carter Stadium. Now this week, we're going to show you a distinctive game day feature that helps the Big 12's other new school, West Virginia, with their game day atmosphere. Is this a real gun? <laughs> is this a real gun? It is a real gun. Uh, we fired uh, right before the game, the whole entire football team's in the tunnel. I fired out, we run out about 60,000 people. And fired after every time we score a touchdown, extra point, field goal at, at the end of the quarter in game. New Big 12 Conference member West Virginia has one of the most unique and recognizable mascots in college sports. And becoming the Mountaineer requires considerable effort. Uh, the Mountaineer mascot is one of the most challenging positions at WVU. They first off with an application, top 10 get an interview, and the final four do a cheer off of the basketball game. They have two people go the first half, two people go the first half wearing the buckskins, and they like to see your interaction with the children, with the families, the student section, how you lead the cheers, the let's go Mountaineers, how you handle and carry the firearm here, uh, just your overall appearance and, and attraction for the whole entire game. Kimball was officially named this year's Mountaineer at the final home basketball game last season. And every year, this tradition involves an official ceremony. Yeah, it's called the passing of the rifle. Uh, the current Mountaineer, you know, he gives his last little farewell. A lot of our families, friends, students, former Mountaineers, school presidents, and different people, you know, show up for this historic event. They talk about the history of the Mountaineer, the role of the Mountaineer. He hands me the new rifle and I get to, you know, give my little uh, speech and how excited I am to be the Mountaineer and start my term. I mean, it's a year term and you travel each year and you can do Mountaineer for two years. I actually tried out three years for this position and finally been able to be selected as the new Mountaineer. And so I've been having a blast this summer and next year I'm going to be trying out for it again. Well, that's definitely one of the cooler mascots I've ever seen. Usually you don't see mascots walking around with a gun. Bang. Bang. Well, the Mountaineers have the weekend off this Saturday, but it's a big weekend in the Big 12 with a sh conference showdown in Manhattan and another non-conference blockbuster in Norman. Wendell, why don't you tell us kind of what you're looking at this weekend? Well, we're heading into the second half of the season, Carter, and I don't think many would have predicted that Saturday's game in Manhattan would be a showdown for first place between Texas Tech and Kansas State. We've got uh, 14th ranked Texas Tech 6-1 overall and 3-1 and in the Big 12 and it's defeated a ranked team each of the last two weeks. Now, they're heading into this trip to face number three Kansas State. It's at 2.30 p.m. on Fox. The Wildcats are number three in this week's BCS standings, and then they're in the middle of the national championship chase. Kansas State's Colin Klein has moved up to the top of the Heisman Trophy surveys this week, and Texas Tech's Seth Dagey is kind of a dark, dark horse candidate, and he could move up in those Heisman discussions if the Red Raiders can beat the Wildcats this week. Now, it's rare to have a big non-conference game played in the middle of the season, but that's exactly what we've got in Norman, Oklahoma Saturday night. Number five, Notre Dame faces number eight, Oklahoma. And the last time the Irish played in Norman, they stunned the Sooners seven to nothing and ended Oklahoma's 47 game winning streak. Now, Notre Dame is seven and zero for the first time in a decade, and it features one of the nation's top defenses. Oklahoma is number eight in this week's BCS standings, and they hope to use a victory to continue to move up in the BCS standings. Now, F FSN will feature a Big 12 triple header this Saturday, starting off at 11 a.m. with Texas playing at Kansas, followed by the TCU at Oklahoma State game at 2.30 p.m., and then Baylor travels to Iowa State. That game will be televised on FSN at 6 p.m. Well, it should be a good weekend full of games. The first fall championships will be decided this weekend when the Big 12 hosts its men's and women's cross country championship in Austin. Here's a look at a preview of what to watch for. Men's and women's cross country titles will be decided Saturday at the Big 12 cross country championships. 
Texas is hosting the event for the first time since 2003, and the competition will be held at the Jimmy Clay Golf Course in Austin. It's going to be really good on both sides, and I think if, if you're going to battle for a top three or four spot on either side, you're going to have to be really ready to run on the day. So um, that's exciting. That's why that's why you want to be in the Big 12, because the competition is the best. Oklahoma State's men's team is the defending champion and will be seeking its fifth consecutive Big 12 title. Iowa State's women's team won its first Big 12 cross-country championship last season and is eager to defend its title. Last year winning our first Big 12 cross-country championships, the, the, the women are really excited about the year. The Big 12 is one of the best conferences in the country and, and especially in cross-country. We know it's going to be a dogfight all the way through and, and uh, we just try and take care of business every day. Um, you know, the process day in and day out and getting better each day. Anytime you win a championship, that, that builds a lot of trust and a lot of, it's a lot of excitement. And I think uh, they want to do it again. And, uh, and I think that's exciting for not only our women, but our men to see. And, and uh, we just got to keep getting better day in and day out. And hopefully if we do that, um, we'll have a chance to, to, to win another championship. Five Big 12 men's teams are in the national rankings with three in the top ten. Oklahoma State is at number one, Oklahoma is number six, and Texas is number seven. In the women's national rankings, Iowa State is number two, followed by Texas at number 14 and Oklahoma State at number 27. The Big 12 Championship Saturday will start the process of competing at the NCAA regional and national level. I think it's just a stepping stone. I think if, if you can go into the Big 12 and, and be competitive and not, not only win, I mean, I think you could... Uh, you could maybe be second or third in the Big 12 and, and still have a chance to, to win your region and go on and be in the top three or four at Nationals. And I think that's just the nature of our conference. I've always told recruits, you know, if you come in and you're good in the Big 12, you're going to be good nationally. And I think that's, that's that can be said for cross country from the top to bottom. You know, the fall season is really heating up. It's going to be interesting to see how everything plays out. All right, Wendell. How about some shout outs? Who are the lucky few to earn such a prestigious honor this week? I'm stealing your line for next week. It's the few, the proud, the shout outs. There we go. There Sorry we go. about that. Well, you can use that again next week. Uh, West Virginia has wasted little time asserting itself as a soccer power in the Big 12. The Mountaineers captured the 2012 regular season title Friday without even taking the field. Baylor's 2-1 victory at Texas clinched first place for West Virginia. The Mountaineers are 6-0-1 in the Big 12 and they'll close out the regular season this Friday at Texas. My second shout out uh, is going to involve some, uh, there's a couple of shout outs about the value of marketing and timing. I think by now we all know that Iowa State's Paul Rhodes is not only an outstanding coach, but he's an emotional guy. Now during the Cyclones upset victory at TCU earlier this month, Rhodes got so excited on the sideline that he broke his headset when he yanked it off. Now Iowa State seized this opportunity. They had Rhodes autograph the broken headset and they auctioned it off and it, the winning bid was $551. Pretty cool. Now when Ryan Leaf was the quarterback at Washington State back in 1997, the school promoted his Heisman campaign by going out and getting Leafs. They took a Leaf, they put it in an envelope, they mailed it to the Heisman voters. It was a very subtle way of getting out the word about Ryan Leaf. Now, Kansas State is doing something similar with Colin Klein. I think we all know that Klein is a quarterback. It's very physical. He gets beat up quite a bit. Well, they're putting out a, a, a mailer, which shows Colin Klein. You can see the bloody elbows, but it's also held together by a Band-Aid. I think it's pretty clever to put something like this out. They're getting the word out by sending this out to Heisman Trophy uh, voters and other award voters. Now, uh, ESPN's Kirk Per Curb Street said that K-State's Colin Klein is the toughest player in all of college football, no doubt about it. Even tough players need bandages, and uh, using a Band-Aid as a tape for this mailer, to me, is simply brilliant. Well, that's quite a creative strategy, you know, I hope that works. That'd be really cool to see. Well, that's going to do it for this week's Big 12 Report Live from Women's Basketball Media Day. As always, be sure to check out our website at Big12Sports.com and follow us on Twitter at Big12 Conference for all the latest news and notes from around the league. We'll see you next week. I'm going to do a little Colin Klein here yeah. and get a little, yeah. little, little bandaid. Yeah. You want to, you want to, yeah, a little, yeah, we got a little Colin yeah. Klein look. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Ah, there we there go. We go. Okay. Go. Colin Klein, baby. Oh, yeah. Right here. Well, West Virginia has a. I was, going, get, get, I was doing well until that last part. Time to join you. I'm Wendell Barnhose. Barnhose. Well, boom, goes the diamond.